This is Ward Marston speaking to you once again through the medium of video and YouTube. I'd like to talk about our next release, which will be coming out uh, at the beginning of March. And uh, this is a single disc release, one of the few single discs we have done in uh, the past few years. Uh, and this disc is devoted to the art of the Cuban soprano, Rosalia Chalia. Now, many of you may not know the name Rosalia Chilia, although if you are a 78 collector, you almost certainly know the name. Chilia, as a vocalist, has been all but forgotten today. You can't find her in the, uh, in the bo reference books on singing or, or uh, singers of the past. You can't find her in the annals of the Metropolitan Opera, except, well, she did sing twice at the Met. Uh, but you, she's not a big name um, among... Uh, devotees of singing. However, for years and years, many years, she has been an icon among record collectors because she was the first great soprano to make a large group of cylinders and phonograph records beginning in the, 18, in the late 1890s. And for years, uh, record collectors have prized her records beyond belief. They're quite rare and usually turn up in very bad condition. I can't tell you how many collectors I've asked about Chalia over the years. And every one of these collectors would say to me, Oh, well, I have a few Chalias. Aren't they wonderful? But mine are in terrible condition. So I have been searching for Chalia records for years. And uh, many of mine are in bad condition. But because I've been able to access the collections of various archives and other uh, collectors, I have been able to put together a CD's worth of Chalia recordings that I think represent her very well. And, um, and many of the recordings are in exemplary condition. And of course, with today's uh, digital, uh, the powers of digital restoration, we can take even recordings that are in average condition and improve the sound uh, so that they uh, are listenable and uh, at least listenable and uh, they sound much better than they look. Some of the records, if you could see what these early records look like, uh, you, you wouldn't believe that they would play at all. Now the problem with old records, the major problem with old records, is the fact it's not so much the process by which they were made. Uh, if you could find a, a 1900 7-inch Xonophone, well, let me show you one here. I just happened to put one on the table here. This is a, um, I don't know how to um, hold this, but can that be, uh, can you see that? <laughs> uh, that's a 7-inch etched label Xonophone. Um, and the back is, is blank, except there's this uh, etching, this writing on the back. So they only made them on one side. And um, anyway, these records really, if you can find them in very good condition, they play rather well, uh, considering the, the, the date of the recording. The problem with them is that you never find them in good condition. The, the playback equipment of the time was very, very uh, damaging to the, re to the records. Uh, it, I, I won't go into a, a detailed description of how the playback equipment worked, but the, the playback head itself that made contact with the, the, the grooves was extremely heavy um, it, because it carried the weight of the playback horn, the, uh, the, the horn, uh, right on top of it. So it had a huge amount of weight, and the weight was all concentrated in the needle, and that needle... Uh, when it came in contact with the record, completely stripped the grooves after just a few playings. So it's remarkable that these records exist in, in any kind of playable condition at all. And, uh, and then, of course, there's Chilea. So let me talk a little bit about, about her. Chilea was born in 1863 of a fairly prominent um, Havana family, and she grew up in Cuba, but like a lot of prosperous uh, Cubans, she was educated in a convent in Spain, and we know relatively little bit, a little about her, her childhood, and even, well, we know very little about her at all, to tell you the honest truth. Uh, there are many mysteries about Chilea's life that it would be wonderful to solve, and, and eventually, uh, we're, I, I'm hoping, and a lot of collectors are hoping, that someone will do extensive research 
uh, into her life and, and no, find out some, you know, fill in some of the details that we don't have. Um, as it is, uh, the, the booklet notes that we are including in this, uh, uh, in this uh, CD compilation are quite amazing because uh, the two writers, Larry Holdridge and Gregor Benko, have unearthed quite a bit of information about Chalia that is, has not been known um, heretofore. But anyway, Chalia, now Chalia's father was an admiral in the Cuban um, Navy, and we know that uh, one of his duties as uh, an ad a leading admiral in the Cuban Navy was to entertain uh, dignitaries who were passing through Cuba. So we know at a very young age uh, that uh, Chalia's father gave a uh, quite a, an elaborate reception for Mrs. and Miss for for President and Mrs. Ulysses S. Grant. And uh, Chalia, as a young teenager, was asked to sing for the Grants, which she did. Um, and although I, I, it seems to me I remember reading something from something written in Chalia's own words that she was aghast at uh, how ugly uh, Mrs. Grant was and how she couldn't could barely bring bring, bring herself to to sing for her. Um, this is it's kind of a funny thing to read in Chilea's own words. But um, but at any rate, Chilea did continue her studies in singing uh, in Europe and um, uh, was came back to uh, came back to this side of the Atlantic because she was uh, asked to marry, her father wanted her to marry a family friend of theirs who uh, lived was a Philadelphian. Um, the problem is we don't know his name. We only know that she was married to a prominent Philadelphian for a, sh a short time, and uh, we don't know who it was. Um, Chilea never uh, discussed it. Now that's one of the points that it would be nice to clear up. We do know that Chilea's operatic debut in this country was made in Philadelphia in 1893 in Aida. She was a stand-in. Uh, nobody knew who she was, and the newspaper uh, reviews gave they uh, gave her rave reviews, and they were all saying, you know, who is this? Who is this wonderful soprano that we've never we've never heard of? And of course, because she was a stand-in, her name wasn't printed on the program, so nobody knew who she was. And uh, there was an interview uh, with her after the performance, and the newspaper writer basically said, "What's your name?" And apparently, Chalia didn't want to give her her, uh, her real name, her, either her married name or her family name, uh, her Cuban name. So she simply said, oh, call me Chalia. I'm Chalia. Chalia is simply a diminutive, an affectionate diminutive for her first name, which is Rosalia. So she, was, she just gave herself the name of Chilea. She had always been called Chilea as a, as a first name. And uh, so she just gave herself this name. And that's how the name, uh, and it stuck, of course, and uh, all her records simply say, sung by, Ros they say Rosalia Chilea. Or sometimes some of the earliest ones, the cylinders, say Madame Chilea. Chilea had a very, um, a very nice career, although singing with minor opera companies, but she started her own opera company in 1898 and um, toured all over uh, Latin America especially and got a, a lot of very fine reviews uh, in Latin America. Uh, she did some touring here in this country as well. Uh, she only sang twice at the Met. She sang Cavalleria Rusticana. I mean, she sang uh, Santuzza in Cavalleria Rusticana in 1898. And then she sang Aida in 1902 in a Met performance uh, given here in Philadelphia.